Uh, so how are things going? Yeah, good. I mean, uh, just waking up to the album being out. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. Uh, After so many years. Actually, that was my first question and it's the, the obvious yeah, question, for- right? So, um after almost a decade why to wait so much to release uh, something after Pink Lemonade I mean uh, there's been COVID for sure and I think you were actually working on the album when when the the lockdown strike but what happened yeah. why nine years well it wasn't really by choice I think uh, uh, sometimes time just gets away and Yeah, just a, a lot of different reasons. Uh, just, um, you know, a couple of us started started families. Um, mm-hmm. It just, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we we. Sorry, my brain is still turning on. No, I've, no worries. I was, up, I, I was up late doing another couple of interviews, and I'm trying to. <laughs> my brain is trying to trying to activate. Um, basically, I think in an ideal world, I would have liked to have had you know an album out every year. Yeah. But, Yeah, well, after... I think I just... Uh, when it came to my country... Yeah, sorry, I think it disconnected for a sec. Yes, yeah, the connection was good enough. Yes, so as we were saying, uh, it's been... Uh, nine years after last release so there's been a lot of factors why you didn't release anything yeah since then but now we have sub hell the new album right um yeah. well, uh we we stopped at 2014 i think it was when you released pink lemonade and if mm-hmm. you hear the last the first two songs on soft hell it reminds you a lot about pink lemonade uh but the rest of the album is totally different so um all the songs on these new albums of hell uh, were recorded or written for this session or do you have some songs from before um i feel like maybe some of the ideas that turned into songs on this one have been around since before pink lemonade but not uh not the first two like you'd think um i think that we we have a lot of demos floating around in different stages uh, like uh yeah michael in the band is never short of ideas and uh yeah there is there are a lot of demos from before pink lemonade and after um so i mean in those nine years there have been a lot of a lot of different pe- bits and pieces and yeah there was yeah there was just a lot floating around from very early on and it wasn't like we just uh started writing the stuff a few years before releasing this like there's been there's, yeah there's been a lot of a lot of pieces of it around for for quite a long time right okay and so hell well it's a great album awesome album uh but if you compare it to the your previous releases uh it's still prog rock right but it's like the more the more pop side of things like and you have tons of melody and tons of hooks and they're so intense on these albums. Do you so do you do you see this as well on on this soft hell? Do you see that like maybe a a more pop side of you? Yeah, definitely. I think. Uh, I mean, the term pop feels it's a bit loaded. It's like 
we just, I think, naturally shifted to sounding this way, just trying to write better songs mm-hmm. um, and just, you know, serving the songs and what, I don't know, I guess it is going down. Oh, excuse me. It is going down like a pop, I guess what could be called a pop, more pop route, but we just, you know, we still wanted all the all the fun, you know, bells and whistles mm-hmm. of, uh, of stuff that's a bit more proggy or a bit more, you know, out there, but we just wanted, we didn't want things to become... Uh, too lost in you know waffling around and we just wanted the songs to be as concise as they could be yeah uh while still you know keeping them as cool as they could be but just you know we wanted it to be an accessible album um so that like a new listener could reconnect with the song sort of right off the bat but then you know there's still a lot in there to to peel back yeah totally so how do you put nine years of stories into an album into 15 minutes of music i I mean have you considered doing a double album or something like that yeah well i think there's (laughs) definitely a lot more stories to put in that that (laughs) didn't 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 come out i think uh yeah it's pro- a, a, a follow-up album uh, right after this might be a good idea because yeah, there's still still a lot of a lot of things to cover from the nine years. <laughs> um, I think yeah, Soft Hell. It's sort of very uh, there's there's for the most part there's like one sort of main theme lyrically. Uh, or one sort of uh, angle for things lyrically, and I think yeah, there's there's definitely more to explore. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You no, know, I love how the album ends with uh, "My Dearest Kate." That song. You know, some people <laughs> prefers to end an album with uh, a high note. I don't know some songs like "Love Lash" or something like that. But uh, "My Dearest My Dearest Kate" just fits perfectly. So I was wondering. How do you choose how to start an album and how to finish an album? It was hard to choose which songs to put at the beginning and at the end. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, uh, that the track list decision co- comes very late, obviously. But um, actually, it was the decision was hard until Jagerbomb came along. I think Jagerbomb was actually the last song to be finished for the entire album Mm -hmm. so once that was finished I think we all sort of thought that would be a really good one to start it with because it is so just like a blast in the face and by the end of it it's like what the hell just happened kind of like I remember hearing we were in the studio recording drums and Michael sent through the demo uh, like everything written from top to bottom instrumentally just like the whole thing was like check this out and we were just like what the fuck where did this come from <laughs> so it was very late it, it, it was a very late addition so yeah it was a difficult decision until that song came along and then we were like okay I think this is uh this is the the opener cool cool (laughs) right so since 2014 till now a lot of things happened in the music industry and a lot of things change especially Mm -hmm. with the internet so now that you're back releasing a new album have you noticed that a lot of things has changed or do you still feel like still the same as 2014 oh no i mean it's completely different now i think so many bands are chasing like you know releasing just single after single or so many artists have just changed around now to i think the album experience is dying a little 
bit. Um, but I think it's still a good experience, and I think it's still a good experience to give people. Um, but yeah, with streaming services and like playlist chasing and and uh, you know everything else going on with social media. I think it's it's great because it's never been easy to sort of uh, be DIY and do things yourself and get stuff out there. Um, but also, there's just so much noise and yeah, I worry that it's like it's loose. You, you, we're losing something. Like you don't. Yeah, I think generally now. Like spending a lot of time on a whole album as a whole experience from start to finish, and like you know, do we just talked about considering which is the first track and which is the last track? I don't even know if that really matters anymore. Um, except for you know, the diehard fans that want to listen to it from start to finish. People just hearing songs spat out by the algorithm, or like just you know, hearing you know. A single at a time every couple of months from an artist. So, yeah, I don't know. It has changed a lot, absolutely. But I think I'm glad we we put out, even though it took a long time. I'm glad we put out a record in the way that we have. Because I, I, I think, as much as it's uh, it's shifting away from it, I think it's still a it's a, an important experience to give. Yeah, totally. I'm talking about um, uh, hardcore fans and uh, you know being there for you. Uh, I think a couple of years ago you re-released the uh, Dependence and the Patience, and even though it happened, it's been a lot of years since that release. When you re-release it, it went number one and number two on the independent charts in Australia, so it sells quite good. Even though you you haven't been releasing and. Uh, no, nothing you know in the previous years so how that yeah. makes you feel that you re-release something like that and it went just number one and number two on the independent charts oh it's crazy like to know that there's still all that love there i think it's very easy and part of the problem and why things have taken so long is you sort of just get lost in your own doubt and you know criticism and uh you just yeah don't, i think lose the appreciation of uh you know there are still people out there that really care and to see that is just uh yeah it's pretty overwhelming like yeah. uh it's, it's hard to believe sometimes that you you know you're just living your life and creating some stuff and it connects with a good amount of people that really really care about it and uh continue to care about it Cool, right. So you're releasing this with Beard Rope label, right? You've been with yeah. them for for some years now, and you have such great partners in the label. So how is it, how is it to be with them? Is it oh, as cool as it seems? Yeah, Mike is an absolute legend. Um, I'm just, yeah, I think everything that's happened for us as far as who we've worked with. Since Pink Lemonade, I feel like we're super lucky. And yeah, Mike is part of that. He's just an absolute legend. And yeah, he's really passionate about music and has a, a bunch of great artists and is really supportive and just, he's just a really sweet dude and has always believed in us, even though it's taken a really long time to get this album out. I think he's a. Uh, you know, never lost his patience or lost his cool. He's always just like wanted us to make sure it was as good as it could be and just always been supportive and yeah, just uh, very happy to be part of that family. Oh, really cool. And you know, this summer, I think it was in, in May or June, you've been on tour uh, with uh, Death Heaven. Right, yeah. We've been playing with them, so it's a uh, it's a uh, very different band from uh, Closer to Moscow. 
uh, especially associated with me the metal scene. So how did that yeah. went? Yeah, I think um, it's always a challenge to play for crowds like that that are there for something very different. Um, I think I like the challenge to try and win people over that might not necessarily listen to what you do, um, but it can be yeah, it can be can be difficult. I mean, being a support band, you're always uh, you know fighting uphill when people are there for the for the headline act. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, when when you are that stylistically different, I mean, it might not be everyone's cup of tea that's there. So you got to really uh, try and put your best foot forward and and dress to impress. You know. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, you know, um, I think it was in 2015. I don't know. I don't remember. It was in 2014 or 2015. When you had that European tour, um, and it was uh, uh, it was cancelled actually, because I think you have some uh, anxiety disorder. Um, I was wondering uh, how is it now? So, how are you? How are you feeling? Are you feeling better or how is it working? Oh, I mean, now? no, it's, it's it's still pretty bad and chronic. Uh, I mean, that's also part of why this album's taken so long. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't the case. Um, Yeah, there's a there's a lot going on. Also, that tour, uh, I think the thing that triggered it though really badly was uh, the attacks in Paris. We were in Paris the night that that happened, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that that kind of uh, really, yeah, obviously was a horrible experience. Yeah. And then after that, I just, I personally just didn't really bounce back from it and just uh, kind of, yeah, fell apart a little bit. And yeah, it's unfortunate to be at the mercy of those things. But I mean, uh, is it better now? I mean, in some ways, no. In some ways, yes. I'm definitely like, I'm a bit older now and a bit more mindful and can see things for what they are. Doesn't always help, but uh, yeah, it's all it's all a work in progress. Yeah. Oh, I hope it gets better. So, um, just to finish the interview, you know, um, after soft hell, uh, people for sure will be wondering we're gonna wait another nine years to listen to to a follow-up or something next to soft hell you know you have bands uh, in australia like uh, king Giza and little wizard they're releasing like four or five albums per year which is quite crazy but are you now that the album is out the album is out today are you thinking about the next step or is it too soon yeah i mean there are songs in the works I, you know King Gizzard mm -hmm. releasing four albums in a year. I mean, out of jealousy, I just want to say fuck them, basically, assholes. <laughs> like, uh, I bet you they're not even that good. I bet you they suck. That's the, the, you can't release that much music and have it be good. No, I'm, that's obviously a joke. I just, uh, <laughs> I would like, I would, I would like to do the same. Um, I think, yeah. It, There are there are other demos in the works. It's just a matter of uh, yeah, keeping up the pace now and putting something out. I would definitely like it to be no later than two years from now. Um, yeah, to put another bunch of songs out. I think even maybe just getting like an EP out of like five, five or six songs, just so we can put something out quicker and uh, and just have more out there It might be a good idea. Um, and now that we've sort of got the dream team when it comes to like recording and producing like working with Andre and working with Becky has been like absolutely wonderful so I think now that we all know how to work with each other and have a workflow together 
it'd be really nice to just like smash out another five or six tracks and put something else out maybe in like you know 12 months 